So today, uh, thanks for the organizers for this opportunity to present uh, some of the recent work actually we're doing on uh, kind of building on kind of earlier work to develop uh, new antithrombotic agents. So before uh, disclosures, and one of the work actually I'm talking today actually like one of these companies are developing it. So this, this work started uh, many years back in 2008, 2009, as a starting as kind of like a, a heparin antidote or uh, to, to uh, decrease the bleeding complication associated with the heparin. It started with uh, uh, a postdoc at that time, uh, Dr. Rajesh, and then currently actually like we are moving into um, developing new endothrombotics actually. So today I'll be talking about uh, the work of the two graduate students, like the one, uh, Shana and uh, Sriparna. So why we need to develop new antithrombotics? Actually, don't, I don't know how to tell. And in this audience, actually, thrombosis is one of the, 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 the largest, uh, uh, it's kind of number one killing uh, disease, and, and we need kind of better treatments. <clears throat> And although there are kind of like many anticoagulants and antithrombotics are available, actually still uh, these conditions actually like uh, killing a lot of patients. So you need kind of better treatments or better way to treat, uh, uh, manage this, uh, manage thrombosis. So if you look at current uh, uh, like treatments, actually there are uh, many different anticoagulants, including uh, direct factor TNA inhibitors, uh, thrombin inhibitors, uh, heparin, and all of those kind of things. If you look at that, um, all, all of these kind of anticoagulants uh, target kind of one or other form of uh, like in, you know, coagulation factors, and because of that, actually, like there is a potential chance of like uh, this, this, this drugs actually cause two to four percent of the patients do get kind of like um, bleeding complications. So you need you need to have kind of like better uh, better treatments or better um, uh, better drugs molecule can be developed. So in 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 in, in in the last uh, 10, 15 years, actually, there is a lot of interest in the, in, in the, the blood literature, thrombosis literature on kind of uh, the polyanions or kind of highly negatively charged molecules, which are implications in, in, in coagulations. So heparin, actually, you might know, actually, which is an anticoagulant, actually, it does not, uh, you know, it, it is a, it's a polyanion. But other polyanions, such as the polyphosphates, and cellular cell-free DNA or cell-free RNA and, and also kind of net assembly, neutrophil extracellular trap assembly. These are kind of like negatively charged molecules, so actually these are implicated in, in thrombosis. So how, you know, and, and since, uh, since this, this molecule is actually like uh, in, in act in multiple different ways. So for example, actually bacterial poly, uh, polyphosphates actually can, it can activate kind of conduct pathway of activation and um, um, uh, like uh, the short chain polyphosphate released by the platelets actually can activate, uh, it, it, can, it, it can increase uh, in, in the thrombin generation by multiple pathways of, uh, in the coagulation. And in addition, to, in, 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 in along with that actually like if you, have, you can see that uh, the polyanion like uh, cellular cell-free DNA as well as extracellular uh, traps actually, so, so these are also polyanions so actually can activate uh, either conduct pathways or other other pathways coagulation, it can lead to uh, like thrombus generation, and it can, it can increase in, in, it can increase the uh, the the, uh, the coagulation. So one of the one of the uh, things is actually like all of these polyanions. Actually, what I talked, they are not uh, kind of part of part. Uh, part of this uh, coagulation enzymes, or is not directly activating directly. It's not not as it's not a coagulation enzyme. So if you can target these molecules, actually, like there might be a chance, actually, like you could develop um, antithrombotic agents or, uh, or uh, antithrombotic agents which could have a potentially a like, bleeding risk can be avoided while we can treat uh, these patients. So how we can develop actually like uh, this kind of like how we can target these polyanions? Can we take advantages of uh, kind of uh, uh, the, the charge density uh, on these polymers? So we, we kind of like looked at uh, in, in, in 2014 and 2015 at that time actually. So we arrived at kind of like a, a molecule called uh, universal health, uh, heparin reversal agent. So we originally developed it as an antidote for heparin, but a, a, a kind of a portion or kind of a version of that molecule is shown to be kind of like highly, um, highly effective in inhibiting the polyphosphate. And this work has been done in collaborations with uh, Jim Morris's lab in uh, University of Michigan. 
So what we found that actually like these particular molecules can, it can specifically inhibit, uh, in, in, in inhibit uh, uh, it, can, it can bind a polyphosphate and, and uh, using carotid artery thrombosis model, actually you can see that actually it has got similar effectiveness as kind of heparins. But one of the challenges at that time actually what we faced is kind of like if you look at this and if you looked at uh, the tail bleeding studies and you look at the, the bleeding risk associated with uh, these this molecules. But you can find that although it's effective, actually it has got uh, you know, a bleeding tendency, actually it is, and it is inhibiting thrombin generation at uh, a higher doses, or, or it is in, in a slightly above the therapeutic doses. So the last several years, actually, we've been looking at actually, can we improve the, this, this molecule, actually? Can we develop a building on this, uh, this understanding, actually? Can we develop a better molecules and better molecules which doesn't have kind of like bleeding, uh, bleeding issues? Towards that purpose, actually, like we are looking at actually, like, you know, can we, uh, can we design molecules actually which has got, like, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the challenges from the previous molecules idea has got high charge density, like high cationic density, so that that is the reason why actually, like, it is inhibiting the thrombin generation in the blood. So if we can design molecules which has got kind of like low charge density, but it still has got kind of high specificity for polyphosphate, we might have a better chance of, better chance of developing this. So how we can develop that? So what we thought, kind of like, you know, you have these molecules, so can we, you need kind of like sufficient charge density so that these molecules can bind to a polyphosphate as kind of the like initial binding has to happen. But if you can, if, you know, and once it binds, so we, our hypothesis is actually like if it binds and then if you can increase the charge density locally and you might be able to get a better binding affinity or better binding strength so that this complex can be stabilized. So in a way, if you do that, actually, like, you know, you can design molecules, actually, which has got very low charge density in the, in the blood. And in the circulating blood, actually, it has got low charge density, is less toxic, but it binds to the, this partner, actually, it increases the charge density so that, actually, it can, it can stabilize that molecule and then it could, it could, uh, it could, it could, it could work out. So we designed, in during, with, with this hypothesis, actually, like, we designed several molecules and uh, Chanel has done kind of like a, a commendable job in kind of a screening a lot of molecules. And uh, so, so based on that, actually, we identified kind of like two, two uh, important kind of like ligands, actually, which can attach, cationic ligands, which can attach to the polymer, actually, which we, um, you know, the polymer scaffold, actually, we already kind of like proven it is highly biocompatible as well as actually it has good, good circulation time. So we attach these this two binding groups, actually, then looking at actually like whether, uh, whether, whether these this molecules can, can be, uh, can, can, is it, is it uh, works in our, uh, you know, uh, is, is it, can we prove the hypothesis actually we, uh, we, we, uh, we kind of envisioned. So to do that, actually, like we looked at the basic principles of chemistry, to look at kind of like what, is, what are the protonation states of these this molecules or these binding groups. So if you look at kind of like uh, in the protonation state of kind of like uh, the old molecule actually, which is UHRA, and you can see that actually like, you know, both of those, uh, uh, like all the amines, except one amines actually, like it is, uh, it's, it's, it's protonation, it's PKA value is around 7.5, that means actually it has good high charge density, that means all the amines are kind of like positive at physiological pH. But if you look at kind of the, 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 the CBG2 actually, which is the binding group, you can see that the one uh, amine actually which has got a positive charge at physiological pH, but the second amine actually it has got a, 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 a pKa around 6.5. So that means actually you, can, you, you have a chance of like changing the, you know, uh, the protonation state of that, 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 uh, that binding group when it is associated with, uh, with the polyphosphate. So what we have seen that actually based on building on kind of like our biophysical studies looking at isothermal titration calorimetry as well as potentiometry titrations actually what we found that actually like when this molecule CBG2 containing molecule actually when it's bind to polyphosphate that second amine also get protonated and then you get kind of like a really high uh, affinity binding is happening. So what we found that actually from this screening studies of almost 20 molecules and what we found that um, you know, the molecules which, which can develop uh, or which, which has got the better activity with uh, almost like a two-third lower charge density than the UHR8, which is kind of like uh, the lead molecule actually we developed uh, at that time. The lower charge density, but uh, it still binds 
effectively to the effect, effectively to the to the polyphosphate. And also, it has got a specificity for polyphosphate is also so. so in the, because of the timing, actually, I cannot show all of those binding uh, binding data and biophysical data. But I will show you kind of like data on kind of the biological activity of these molecules, actually starting from uh, the in vitro blood coagulation studies. So this is uh, the the polyp inhibition of, of these molecules in presence of like you know using a thrombin generation assay. As you can see that actually like we screened uh, 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 these nine molecules, actually you can see that like, uh, you know, uh, uh, these molecules do have kind of like uh, thrombin inhibition activity at, uh, at different concentrations. And these this, this studies are used as kind of like a, a screening assays to identify the lead molecule actually which you can use in, in animal studies in the future. And then we also looked at kind of like a blood compi the, the, the screening principles are kind of like inhibition activity is polyphosphate and then biocompatibility using kind of like a multitude of kind of like a blood compatibility assays, including whole blood, whole blood assay actually like what you have seen here. So you can see that actually like, you know, the lead molecules actually one of those, you can see that uh, this molecule does not, even though it is cationic, actually it does not kind of like change uh, the, the whole blood coagulation uh, profiles of these molecules. It is almost benign, benign to that. And also kind of like, you know, based on the screening studies actually had seen uh, this, these three molecules actually is found to be kind of the, the lead molecule actually which is shown kind of like uh, a good blood compatible properties as well as kind of like good uh, uh, polyp polyphosphate inhibition activity. And then we look, moved on to kind of like, uh, uh, like in vivo studies actually here. I, so this, we collaborated with uh, um, uh, uh, Raymond at least, uh, you know, has uh, kindly actually like uh, performed these studies. Actually, we used uh, the screening studies using intravitreal microscopy to look at which molecules of, out of these three uh, based on kind of like in vitro studies actually like which molecules works uh, better. Based on this uh, intravital microscopy, actually, but we found that actually, like MPI8, actually, is, is found to be kind of like uh, the, mo the lead molecule, actually, which shown kind of like uh, inhibition of like thrombosis uh, in, the, in, in, this, in, in this model. And moving from there, actually, like we looked at uh, carotid artery thrombosis model to look at again, actually, whether these molecules are effective there. Actually, in comparison to our, our lead molecule in the previous generation, actually, UHR10, and these molecules are kind of like uh, inhibiting thrombosis in, in, this, uh, in, this, in this particular model. And this is a kind of arterial thrombosis model. And then we looked at kind of like uh, another model, like the IVC model, IVC partial ligation model to look at kind of like venous thrombo uh, uh, thrombosis to see that actually like whether these, these molecules are effective. As you can see that actually like in this model too, the thrombus generation is kind of like inhibited or kind of minimized uh, by, by, these, uh, by, by these molecules. And, and what, uh, what about kind of like uh, the bleeding tendency, although it's effective, in, it's effective in preventing thrombosis actually, whether it is how, how effective actually in, in, in looking at, you know, whether it changes the bleeding, bleeding, uh, bleeding properties. So this this is in you know, we compare this with uh, unfractionated heparin and uh, so this this is done uh, without kind of like uh, the mice actually like is injected with this molecule and see that actually whether uh, whether this uh, this molecule actually produce kind of like in bleeding. As you can see that actually like you know un, up, up to 300 milligrams per kilogram actually be injected and you know it doesn't show kind of like a bleed, bleeding tendency. Uh, by, by this, this particular model. And then further actually like uh, we, we again actually like uh, um, uh, Raymond helped us to, uh, to look at in a, in a cephanous way in a hemostasis model actually looking, looking at kind of the breeding tendency for this molecule and shown that actually like this does not affect fibrin accumulation or kind of platelet accumulation there that shows that actually these molecules are, 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 are really kind of like not showing kind of like the, the breeding tendency uh, shown by kind of like a uh, the other anticoagulants or other uh, previous generation previous generation molecules and further to that actually we looked at actually whether you know although sh shown that actually like is active and also it is, does not have any bleeding problem but what about the toxicity so here actually like you know and since it is a cationic molecule uh, you know we have to you know catch you know almost all our vasculature is kind of like uh, it, it has got uh, negatively charged as as you have seen from uh, uh, Professor McNanny's talk, actually, the silase, uh, you know, that uh, put, uh, all the silic acid is kind of a lot of, lot of negative charge there. 
So the you know, so we had to consider that kind of like whether these molecules are benign to benign to that. Uh, you know, it does it bind to endothelial cells or does it bind to the all the other proteins or anything like that? So whether it is is toxic. So what we what we did is kind of like we looked at kind of a, a you know a bolus injection um, uh, to look at. Uh, like uh, you know whether uh, this this uh, this this, uh, uh, this molecules are toxic. So here we in injected up to kind of 500 milligrams uh, per kilogram, a half a gram of uh, like a cationic polymer. Actually, we are injecting here, and still actually we didn't see kind of like uh, any changes in the kind of like you know like uh, 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 any changes in the liver toxicity or kind of like another LDH release actually, which is kind of like telling actually whether there's any kind of tissue toxicity actually. You can see that in day two actually like you don't see kind of like any kind of like problems. And then, you know, day, uh, day 14 actually we looked at a kind of like other, uh, including histology actually you could see that actually like the, the mice behave kind of normally. And also kind of like this, this dose is kind of like not the maximum tolerated dose actually. This is kind of like, you know, a half a gram of cationic polymer is kind of injected there. And, and this, this data is kind of like telling, you know, almost this is the best cationic polymer so far developed uh, for any kind of, with the, any biological activity actually. So geez, this much polymer we can inject or this kind of cationic stuff we can inject uh, it is, is amazing, actually. So, for example, I can give you an example. Protamine, actually, which is a which is a drug used in kind of like uh, in antidote for heparin. So, if you inject more than 20 milligrams per kilogram in in mice, it, it dies. Okay, and and uh, polylysine, actually, like if you inject two milligrams, actually, the mice dies. So, come, you know, see that actually have you know 500 milligrams per kilogram. Still, the mice is kind of like really, um, you know, it, it survives actually without much toxicity. So, so this is about the polyphosphate story. Actually, what about other other polyanions? Actually, we are you know other other student Shripana is actually working on kind of like looking at can we can we kind of like uh, uh, identify uh, uh, inhibitors in this like uh, uh, nucleic acid inhibitors to, so that actually can arrest thrombo you know, arrest the, uh, the thrombosis associated with the, uh, the nucleic acids. So she has done, actually, I cannot show all the data, but uh, she, has, she has screened kind of almost 30 different molecules, actually, we developed over the years, and then also a few molecules, actually, here. She used kind of like uh, one of those, um, uh, like, uh, uh, nucleic acid surrogates, poly-IC, actually, is used as, it's a con it activates contact pathway, and, uh, and we screened using that molecule to look at, actually, whether... Uh, whether these these molecules actually like uh, can inhibit uh, inhibit uh, thrombus generation uh, thromb you know like thrombin generation associated with uh, uh, nucleic acids. As you can see that like this 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 is one molecule I am showing. Uh, it, it could it could inhibit thrombin generation uh, associated with uh, with, uh, with uh, poly I, poly IC. Building on to this, actually, like we, we moved on to kind of like using uh, kind of a sepsis model, like in a CK ligation function model. This is one of the a good sepsis model in, in mice model. And uh, so we, we, we started uh, the ligation, actually, after ligation, uh, after two hours, we have three injections of these molecules and looked at kind of like uh, it's, um, it's a DNA concentration. Actually, you can see that the DNA uh, uh, in, in the blood actually kind of like decreased. Uh, in, you know, by injecting these molecules, and you can see that tight complex is decreased significantly, and also kind of like uh, the thrombin generation is also kind of decreased uh, uh, cons uh, significantly there. In addition to that, actually, another important observation is kind of like uh, uh, cytokine storm is kind of another hallmark of kind of like uh, 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 you know, the sepsis, and you could see that actually like you know with uh, with uh, the, this 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 molecule actually we could kind of normalize the cytokine storm. Um, using uh, using this, this this molecule actually, which is kind of like interesting, and we are continuing developing uh, this molecule um, uh, is this molecule in the lab. So in in, in uh, concluding, actually, like I would like to say that actually, like we, we kind of like identified or kind of like uh, designed new set of inhibitors, actually, which was which uh, which with a new design using the basic principles of chemistry. Actually, we we were able to develop so, some new inhibitors. And the switchable protonation state is kind of like one of the, the most important aspect here, actually. So this molecule actually like, you know, uh, it, uh, it circulates at a low charge density, 
but it but when it sees kind of the the polyanion it binds and then increases the charge density by recruiting proton from the surrounding so that actually like it could it could increase the charge density so that you could get a kind of a better affinity or better binding constant there and that way actually because of that you are able to kind of like uh, design you uh, can you can um, design some selectivity for these molecules as well as kind of like you know can increase the the biocompatibility there and um, the lead uh, um, MPA candidate actually shows um, act good activity, and um, and also kind of like we are we are in in the early stages of developing kind of like better nucleic acid inhibitors, and that might have some utility in in, in 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 coming along. So before concluding, I would like to acknowledge my lab. Actually, a fantastic group of people. Actually, like this is a kind of 2020 uh, image. Actually, like uh, uh, and. Uh, and also kind of like uh, funding from various organizations and also my collaborators actually which are they are the amazing people actually like which helped me actually i develop uh, b better molecules but all of those kind of animal studies and all of those kind of things are help helped by a lot of my collaborators including uh, this polyphosphate story was uh, developed in collaboration with uh, jim morrissey and um, uh, and charles haynes and ed conway and uh, dirk lang lang actually helped in kind of sepsis model and, uh, and, uh, and Michael uh, Hollenstad as well as Peter Henke actually helped in some of the animal studies in, 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 the, uh, in the bleeding model as well as kind of like uh, the IBC, IBC model. And thank you very much for your attention actually. I'll, like, uh, and, um, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Really nice talk, Jay. I, I had two quick questions for you. Sure. So that, that whopping dose that seems to have no tox is, is amazing. That's terrific. Do, do you know if it redistributes in tissues differentially? And do you know how it gets cleared? So this molecule, actually, the, the lead molecule has got a circula uh, like a molecular weight of about 10K, okay, 10,000, okay. So in the, we haven't done a biodistribution of this molecule yet. But we are going to do that. But a previous generation, actually, which is not an optimized molecule, like the UHRA 10, we looked at kind of like its clearance, okay. So it, it cleared um, half, a th half through the kidney and half through the, uh, through the liver. Okay, so it does, it does have kind of very minimal um, tissue accumulation. Okay, and, and then the second was um, nets and, and blocking net formation. So I know Paul Koobs always tells yeah. me that you get net release when you get platelets bouncing off of um, neutrophils, and that's when they start spewing. So do you know if it's blocking neutrophil and platelet association? Or? Uh, so we don't know it, actually. Like, we, we, are, we know that actually this molecule is kind of like... Um, um, what, what it does is actually Shippen has uh, uh, shown that actually it could coat the nets, okay? It is not dissociating the nets. So it is kind of like, uh, so if you dissociate net, actually like DNA comes along and, and uh, histone comes, both are actually activating coagulation. So this one is kind of like stabilize the nets in a way that actually it coat, uh, in, you know, and so that actually it prevents the, uh, 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 the activation of coagulation. And that is kind of like the, the, the distinguishable feature of this molecule versus kind of a, a net inhibitor, actually, I would say. This is a, a, a coding rather than, and then it facilitates kind of the clearance, yeah. yeah sorry, terrific stuff, Jay, as always. Uh, <clears throat> I guess one of the things is ease of administration. You're intravenous at the moment, presumably. Yeah. What are the possibilities of uh, sub-Q, intramuscular, or oral? Uh, oral, I don't know actually because it's a it's a water soluble, highly water soluble, large molecules. But we have done um, intramuscular as well as kind of like subcutaneous injection. Actually, it, it is effective. Okay, it it is by availability of there is in this molecule. Okay, Thank so you. it is there. So. Very nice work, actually. I'm glad to be part of this study. Uh, I ha just have one question. Polypy is in a platelet dense granule. It only screwed up in platelet activation. So that means platelet respond to vascular injury still 
kind of intact, or at least platelets normally adhere. I'm, I'm just trying to uh, un better understand. Uh, we don't see the bleeding as we did, uh, tail bleeding, and uh, also uh -huh. it's a uh, saphenous vein injury. Do you so have a, any better uh, explanation in, in, in addition to platelets? I assume that platelet adhesion is still intact, at, at least uh, in at initial injury phase. Yeah. So then we, subsequent I, formation of thrombosis inhibited. Yeah. So what we have done actually, like when he submitted the paper, actually that is undergoing revision. So the the one question was actually whether these molecules kind of like changes the function of the platelets. So what we did is kind of an experiment was kind of like uh, we uh, used ADP actually, which is an activating agent for platelets, and looked at kind of like how the ADP activation of platelets is influenced by the presence of these molecules at different doses. But we found that actually like uh, ADP can activate uh, you know, in, uh, platelets in presence of this molecule irrespective of that. Okay. So um, is, is, is there, okay. So, so once it activates, it releases the playlist, then it might be, it should be binding to the polyphosphate and uh, looking at it. Okay, thank you.